Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ohio Association of College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. I'd like to thank you for joining us here this evening. A few housekeeping items before we get started. There is a Q&A feature on the bottom of your screen, which you can use to type questions to our presenters at any time during this session. If you do have a question for a specific college, be sure to mention that college within your question. Your camera and microphone are turned off, so that way the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is also just one of many sessions that are happening, so if you do have some other ones to attend this hour, please feel free to do so. And this presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same site where you registered. I'd like to turn it over to our first college for the session, and that is Hawaii Pacific University. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Awesome. Aloha, everyone. My name is Susie Prenovo. I'm an Associate Director of Admissions for Hawaii Pacific University. I am regionally based in the Seattle, Washington area, and my region covers the northern part of the U.S., including Ohio. So I am your admissions counselor. All right, so let's learn a little bit about uh, one of the most westernmost universities in the U.S., Hawaii Pacific University. We are a private university, mid-size, about 4,000 undergraduate students with 50 programs of study. We were founded in 1965 and we are in the state capital city of Honolulu, Hawaii. You'll experience some small classes, average class size is about 17 students at HPU with a 12 to one student faculty ratio. So let's take a look at the island a little bit closer. We actually have three campuses on the island of Oahu. Now, Oahu is called the Gathering Place. It has the uh, largest population of the state of Hawaii. And again, state capital of Honolulu is where our main campus is, right in the urban waterfront core. So we are uh, just within walking distance of the state capitol buildings, the government center, financial and cultural district of Honolulu. We also have our uh, Hawaii Loa campus, which is about eight miles away and we do have a free shuttle. So that is kind of a more quieter residential setting as well. We have housing on both sides of campus. And then we also have our Oceanic Institute for Environmental Science, Marine Biology and Ocean Oceanography students. So that is our research campus. Now let's take a quick video tour of our three campuses and I'll bring some sights and sound of Hawaii your way. Aloha Tower is where our main campus is. We have our downtown facilities where the dorms are downtown. Um, we've seen some great fun sites of our community, our um, waterfront plaza. We do have one of the most diverse bodies in the U.S. as well. Local arts and sciences and the small classes have an all students. So no matter what your major, you're going to get those hands-on opportunities. And the campus again is very walkable. You're right in the shop, restaurants, cafe, um, cultural events, and all within the bar, oceanic, or marine science. Our housing, our lofts, have our dining facilities right on the waterfront. So, those are the cafeteria there. Vision two, we're a Pacific West Conference for sport. Our women's basketball team is ranked number three. And of course, you're in Hawaii. So, when you're not in class, you're exploring the island, endless summer, beaches. Uh, and really enjoying life as a student in Hawaii. For our undergraduate programs, we have over 45 different ones. Um, featured programs for us certainly are our sciences, including our marine biology, oceanography, environmental science. We have a new program called Arts and Market. So it's a combination of business with music, theater, or visual arts. We also have new engineering programs, all of our programs are direct entry with the exception of nursing. So when you apply to the 
College of Business, for example, you get straight in to whichever major that you choose. We offer a residential honors and a scholars program. If you wanna go above and beyond even smaller classes, a uh, little more uh, multidisciplinary approach to your classes. We do have deadlines each year of December 1st for priority for those. For admissions, we have uh, the Common App as well as the application on our website. We're mainly looking at your transcripts. If you choose to uh, submit your SAT or ACT, we'll take those, but again, it is optional. We are test optional personal statement and recommendation letters lets us know you a little bit better as an applicant, but they are optional. And if you are a senior this year and haven't applied, you can still use the fee waiver code SUSY21. We do offer fee waiver codes each year for students if you are interested in applying. For costs, we are a private university, so there's no difference between in-state or out-of-state. Tuition for the year is $29,520. Room and board really varies depending on your size of your room, how many roommates, the meal plan that you choose. Keep in mind, we do have generous scholarships. We encourage all students to do the FAFSA for financial aid as well. When we're looking at your overall GPA and we are accepting you, we also do a merit scholarship, um, anywhere from 5,000 all the way up to 20,000 off tuition a year, renewable every year as long as you maintain satisfactory academic progress. We have some talent based scholarships as well for things like our orchestra, our esports, debate team. We also have scholarships for our D2 athletic programs as well. Just some important dates. Um, FAFSA, certainly if you're a senior, hopefully you've already done that. Uh, we did have a couple of uh, deadlines for early action and regular decision. However, we are rolling admission after that, so we are still accepting applications. Um, housing applications open up on March 1st, and then May 1, of course, is when we want you to let us know and other schools know if you are attending or not. This is my contact information. And if you have your cell phone handy and want to automatically pull up our inquiry card, you can just take a picture there of the QR code. Um, feel free to reach out to me as your admissions counselor. I am very happy to help with any of your questions. Aloha and mahalo. Thank you. Thank you so much for that presentation. Up next, we have Pacific University, Oregon. Hello, everybody, and welcome from the West Coast right now. Not quite as far west as we just were, but I'm glad to be sharing today about Pacific University. And we definitely want to tell you a little bit about our school out here in Oregon. My name is Derek. I'm actually your admissions counselor when you apply to the university. I get the pleasure of working with all the students from the Midwest and out towards the East Coast. So we definitely want to be able to get in contact with you. And I'll be sure to put my information into the chat feature so you can see it there as well. But Pacific itself, we're a small private liberal arts university. We're located in Western Oregon, about, depending on driving time, about 30 minutes west of Portland. So we're right near the city of Portland. You can fly in very, very easily and get out to campus using mass transportation. But where we're located is amazing because we're just far enough out of Portland, 15 minutes off campus and you're into that beautiful Pacific Northwest forest you see behind me in the Tillamook National Forest. An hour drive from campus, you can be on three different beaches or an hour in the other direction, you're headed up towards Mount Hood and skiing almost year round. So it's a really amazing location where we're at and being surrounded by places like Nike, Xerox, Columbia, World Headquarters definitely helps our students have those connections to the broader business world as well. And at Pacific, we offer over 65 different majors, minors and programs to our students. We're best known um, nationally for things like pre-optometry, pre-physical therapy, the health professions, but we also have nationally and regionally ranked programs in creative writing, business, education, and music. So you're gonna find a little bit of everything while you're looking here at Pacific University. And we are that small private liberal arts idea that small classes of only about 19 students, we only have about 1900 undergraduate students and about 2000 graduate students as well. And some amazing pathways for our students going into things like optometry and physical therapy where they can speed up that process at Pacific. But for those 1900 undergraduate students, we want them in classes where they can interact with the professors, not having to apply into a separate honors program or a separate program to get that interaction. And at Pacific, 100% of our classes are taught by professors. No TA is doing any teaching here at Pacific. We want you learning from the best who want to be there teaching you and continue to be top in their field. And while you're doing that, 
Most importantly, we want you to get a four-year education. That's our guarantee to our incoming students is that if you come to Pacific, you're doing it in four years. No fifth year, six years or victory laps. We actually want you to be able to come here, get that four-year degree and take that next step right away. And at Pacific, that degree comes not just with a piece of paper and a good luck handshake, but a real life resume to back it up. At Pacific, we start job shadowing research and internships, freshman and sophomore year of college, not waiting till we're a junior or senior so that you have that opportunity to not only take what you're doing in the classroom, but apply it to real world problems. Whether that's through internships, doing research at places like I mentioned, Nike, Intel, Xerox, Columbia, or being able to continue to do work in your field and job shadow in an uh, education classroom, this is available to every student at Pacific, and it leads to extremely high job placement ratings and graduate school placement ratings for all of our students across all of our disciplines. Again. We don't have separate honors programs or separate schools that you apply into because all of our students are getting this advantage by coming to Pacific and that you don't have to jump through extra hoops to get that advantage, but it's available to all of our students. And at the same time, we also know it's really important for students to have outlets. So we encourage our students to be involved in over 70 different clubs and organizations, over 20 different performing arts groups, or joining some of our 24 varsity NCAA Division III athletics. You're gonna have a lot of opportunity to try out different groups and find your identity and your inspiration while you're here on campus and not have to give up your major or your four-year plan to do that. And along with that, I already mentioned it with internships, but we love having our students go out, whether it's into the wider world, whether it's into the Pacific Northwest or whether it's out and give back. Our students are very well known nationally for being able to try out things like the outdoor pursuits, learning how to surf on the Oregon coast, maybe studying abroad in 27 sites around the world, or being able to do community service and give back, whether that's here in Forest Grove where we're located or in the larger community as a whole. But our students love to be able to go outside of the classroom and take what they're learning to apply it to real world problems in the business setting, real world problems in the outdoor setting, because where we're located, again, is an absolutely beautiful area to try out, or maybe that's taking it and solving something internationally. But again, using your degree while you're at Pacific to build on that and create more while you're here. And at Pacific, because we are a private liberal arts school, we have no in-state or out-of-state tuition and no in-state or out-of-state scholarships. So what that means is when you're applying to Pacific, this is not a separate application coming from Ohio, coming from Guam, Hawaii, Oregon, it doesn't matter. You're all looking at the same opportunity for scholarship. And at Pacific, if you are a senior and are still looking at applying, we are still accepting applications and still awarding scholarship. And going into next year, we'll have very similar opportunities for you as well. We use the common application for applying. That's all we're gonna need is that online application, a transcript, letter of rec, and you're ready to go there. And that's also all we need for our scholarships as well. You're not, again, having to fill out more paperwork. You don't like filling out paperwork. I don't like reading paperwork. So we're trying to make this as easy a process as possible. And so to help with that, again, when you apply, you're applying for our merit scholarships, which are available to all students. They're need blind, state blind, and non-competitive. The only person you're competing with is you. How did you do in high school? And how are you continuing to do in your academics? Our academic merit scholarships range from 15 to $27,000 a year for all four years. And again, all you need to do is apply for admission and you'll apply for those. You can also come visit campus, whether that's virtually or in person, or apply for scholarships in many of those different areas we have. And again, I'm Derek, so I'm your admissions counselor and I'm glad to answer any questions you might have. Please feel free to reach out. And again, I will put my information into the chat so you can connect with us there as well. Wonderful, thank you so much for your presentation. As a reminder to our participants, if you do have questions for any of the colleges that you're seeing today, definitely feel free to drop those into the Q&A and we'd be happy to answer them. Up next, we have Willamette University. Thanks so much and good afternoon everyone. My name is Claire Lights and I'm one of the senior assistant directors in the Office of Admission at Willamette University. I'm going to take you through a really quick a six minute um, presentation here um, and then in the hopes it kind of piques your interest and you will be willing to virtually visit with us further to learn more about Willamette. But let's get started here. Um, very close to Pacific University, Oregon, kind of just down the road a little bit. We were founded in 1842. We are a four-year private liberal arts institution supported by three professional schools our College of Law, our Atkinson Graduate School of Management, and our Claremont School of Theology. Additionally, we're one of the 40 colleges that change lives. And if you have not looked into the college that changed lives as a part of your college search yet, I would encourage you to do so. 
A quick number snapshot for you here, 1,800 undergraduate students, 600 graduate students. We have 52 academic programs, um, an 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio, and our average class size is 17. So I usually joke with students if you are hoping to be anonymous when you go to college. Well, it might not be the best place for you, right? Um, a couple fun facts for you here. We own 305 acres of land just north of our campus called Xena. It's a particularly cool experience for our biology and environmental science students to be able to really get their hands on learning experience there. We have a 54 year partnership with Tokyo International University in Japan. They send about 100 international students over every year and they're embedded into our campus culture. We are 76 feet away from the state capitol, which you'll see here in a moment, and 80% of the interns in the state capitol building are Willamette students. And last but not least, we have over 66 study abroad opportunities across the globe. A quick look of our campus here, as I just mentioned, um, this building right here is the state capitol, um, and this right here is our campus, and these are the star trees. They were planted on Willamette's 100th birthday. They are the largest sequoia trees outside of the Redwood Forest in California, and they are a sight to see. I hope you get to see them sometime in person. This is my personal favorite spot on campus called the Millstream. Um, lots of students will be hanging out here, meeting with professors, and doing some homework in the sunny days of Oregon, and this is our undergraduate library in the back here. This gives you an idea of where we're located within Salem, Oregon. So here's our campus to orient yourself. And then here's downtown Salem. So very much a college town. We're about an hour to the coast, an hour to Portland, and an hour to the mountains. So very centrally located within Oregon as well. This gives you an idea of what a traditional double occupancy residence hall looks like on our campus as well. Talk a little bit about the academic experience here and just some distinctive qualities about that for us us, pardon me. Our hearth system is one of my favorite pieces of our academic experience. And so let's take for sake of example, the chemistry department. Maybe you're studying chemistry, had a class earlier that day, and then you want to go study in the chemistry hearth. It's essentially a academic family room where you can study with people who you had class with earlier that day. And each academic department has its own hearth. Couches, comfy chairs, desks, you name it. It's just a wonderful space to be able to study with those who you are learning the same things about with. We also have an experiential learning credit as a part of our general education requirements. And that is this idea that we're turning knowledge into action. That phrase right there is a part of Willamette's mission statement. And so we really want you to take what you're learning in the classroom and apply that outside of it. I mentioned earlier, we have graduate schools, which means we have dual degree programs. So for the case of the law school, it's a three plus three program, um, business three plus two. Our data science, you can actually do in a three plus one program. And then we also have partnership programs with um, three plus two forestry with Duke University, as well as Oregon State University. And three plus two engineering programs partnership with um, Columbia University in New York City, Washington University in St. Louis, and University of Southern California. We also recently launched some new undergraduate majors that we're really excited about in business, public health, and data science. A little bit about life outside the classroom. Our students are very busy doing about two or three things on average outside of their academics. And we have over a hundred clubs and student organizations. So there's certainly no shortage of opportunities to get involved. Um, our campus recreation and outdoor program is one of our most popular um, organizations. We offer about 120 trips every year. We have a handful of multicultural and affinity groups for those who are looking to be in community with people who identify the way that they do. And we also have a very robust student government. We have 19 NCAA Division III varsity sports, and we will be 20 this coming fall. We are adding a women's triathlon team, which we're very excited about. About 25% of our undergraduate students um, do participate in varsity sports. Otherwise, you can participate in club and intramural sports on our campus. If you're more of the musical theater dance realm, of those, that's where your interests lie, we have 20 music ensembles and performing arts clubs, um, music, vocal, instrumental, dance, as well as theater ensembles. And we do have fraternity and sorority life on campus. So about 15% of our undergraduate students do choose to participate in fraternity and sorority life. A little bit about applying to and paying for college. Willamette is a common application exclusive school. We have an early decision, early action deadline, as well as a regular decision deadline. Three things to know about our application. No application fee, it's free to apply. No supplemental materials. And we are a test optional institution and have been for many years. With your common application submission, that is your application for merit-based scholarships as well. And that goes up to $20,000 a year. 
We have competitive scholarships that you can apply for on top of your merit scholarship listed in all the programs you see there. You don't have to be studying music or theater to be able to participate in those. And last but certainly not least, we do have need-based financial aid with the FAFSA and we do have paper FAFSAs available for those who might need them. Well, that was a whirlwind of information, but if you see this website right here, willamette.edu slash go slash virtual visit, we encourage you to continue to connect with us, especially from Ohio in this virtual world. It's a wonderful opportunity for you to see what life is like out here in the Pacific Northwest. That is my direct contact information and I'm your admission counselor. Please feel free to reach out if you do have questions and I'll hand it back to Clarissa. Thank you so much for your presentation. Up next, we have Webster University. Hi there, welcome everybody. My name is Andrew Lowey. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at Webster University. I want to give you a little bit of information about Webster and um, hopefully this will help you decide uh, your future in terms of your college plans. We're located in Webster Groves, Missouri, which is a residential suburb of St. Louis. Uh, if you're familiar with the St. Louis area at all, where it's a southwestern suburb, this is where we're located. So we kind of have the best of both worlds. Uh, Webster Groves is a cozy suburb, uh, but then we have St. Louis not too far away. We're a smaller university. About 2,400 full-time students, so this is not a large state university situation. A big hallmark for us is that you do get into your major right away, so we will not have a situation where you just have to take general classes or two years of everything but what you're interested in. We do have you start immediately in your major and make sure that that's what, is, what, what you wanted to do and the major is what you, um, what you expected. Uh, there's over 100 academic programs and we also have amazing study abroad, so we'll talk about that as well too. Here's your admissions information. We're on rolling admissions, which just simply means we process the applications as they come in. Our recommended deadline is January 1st for, for juniors and sophomores that are out there. Seniors, you can certainly still apply. In fact, we'll take applications all the way through the summer, but we do recommend January 1st if you, if you uh, are able to plan ahead because it uh, makes it a little easier as you're going through the process there. Here is our academic information in terms of in terms of what the academic profile of incoming students looks like. Um, our overall acceptance rate is about 78%. If you go into art, dance, music, or theater, there all there is a secondary process and audition or portfolio review that you have to go into for specific acceptance into those programs. So I'm gonna run through the five colleges and schools real quick. This is our College of Arts and Sciences. Some people refer to it as the, um, as the humanities or the liberal arts. Um, this is where the, the science programs are, your English, uh, lots of good programs in international relations, international studies, we have a philosophy program, the pre-professional, the pre-med, the psychology, all that lives in the College of Arts and Sciences. Next, we have the Fine and Performing Arts uh, at Webster. These are all, these are very robust programs for us. Um, we, uh, we have significant programs in all of the Fine and Performing Arts. These are actual degrees you can get within the art department. You can get a degree in painting if you want, a specific degree in sculpture. Uh, in the dance department, they're doing classes in aerial and jazz and tap classes. And then you can see everything we're doing here in music and theater, including all these tech areas. These are very comprehensive tech areas that we offer in the theater department. So again, very robust uh, fine and performing arts offerings at Webster. And then along those lines, also do quite a bit in our school of communications everything from animation to film and TV production to game design, public relations, script writing, sound recording and engineering, which is what you see right here, uh, digital media, very comprehensive program. And again, you do get into the major right away in communications, which is very important uh, to us. So um, definitely a strong area for us uh, in the area of um, communications. This is our Walker School of Business. This is where you'll find our business majors, our math majors, we have a new major in sports and entertainment management. So all of these programs make up the School of Business and Technology and a new program in cybersecurity as well. Our fifth, our fifth school is the School of Education. And this is for students who want to, want to be a teacher anywhere from, from K through 12. And we also have various emphasis areas uh, within there as well too. I did mention about study abroad. Study abroad at Webster is a pretty big deal. It's so much of a big deal that if you see this bottom bullet point here, we're gonna pay for your plane ticket to go abroad. That's how much we want you to go abroad. So uh, lots of different options here. Your scholarships and financial aid travel with you. That's very important. And you can get into it as early as second semester of freshman year. So like I said, a very, very important part of the Webster experience. And we want you to do that if at all possible. 
This is our campus housing. So all of our housing at Webster is suite style. We don't do the bathroom at the end of the hall for 30 people. We don't have that anywhere. It's all this, what I would call semi-private bathroom situation. And this picture here in the bottom, that really is our residence hall. It's not a just a generic photo we put in there. That's really is what it, what it looks like. So they're very spacious and comfortable. We're very lucky to, uh, to have those. This is our tuition and financial aid profile. We do not charge for out-of-state tuition. We do have lots of academic scholarships. They go anywhere from $13,000 to $19,000. We have a full tuition scholarship available as well too. This gives you an idea of kind of what you're, what you're looking at in terms of the qualifications to apply for those programs. A couple of examples of what our graduates um, are doing afterwards. Uh, that really is the Oscar for Frozen that Leah is holding there. She works for Disney Feature Animation. We have graduates on Broadway. Uh, we have Alex who's direct, directing the late show with Seth Meyers. Uh, we have recording engineers in Nashville and other places, professional musicians, and people who are working in Hollywood uh, as well, too. So uh, very fortunate to have a, a broad array of, of students uh, working really all over the country in all sorts of in, uh, industries there, just to give you an idea. This uh, next slide is probably my favorite slide because, um, as a lot of people will tell you, college is all about fit. It's very important that you're in a place that you're comfortable and where you're around other students who you can really relate to. And this gives you an idea of the type of student that comes to Webster. So I would really take a look at this. This is very important to, to us. This is very important to you when it comes to making a decision, but um, these are the kinds of students that, that come to Webster. And um, you know that should be kind of a, a really important factor as you're looking to consider um, your choices there. And then last but not least, these are your next steps. Um, apply anytime uh, before August 1st, uh, before your senior year begins. Make sure you send us your transcript. Um, uh, we do have some preview days coming up, so check those out and attend some preview days. They're online. We are open for in-person visit and then contact us anytime with questions. Thanks. Thank you so much for that presentation. Up next, we have Northland College. Hi, y'all. How's it going? I hope everyone's doing well. Um, I'm Tori Schell and I'm an admissions counselor at Northland um, and Sadie, my wonderful colleague, also an admissions counselor is on the call as well. So feel free to shoot us questions if you've got them, um, but let's get into it. So Northland was founded in 1892 and we're a community of about 600 students um, from about 29 different states and a handful of different countries as well. Oopsies. <laughs> All right, um, we're located in the Schwamigan Bay area of Northern Wisconsin, which is about an hour from Duluth and about 40 miles from the Apostle Islands um, National Lakeshore. And Northland's main campus is just about 100 acres in size, but our borders are just the beginning. We're right between the city of Ashland, which is a population of about 8,200 and about a million acres of national forest. The city itself is vibrant with historic buildings, cozy restaurants, local craft and antique stores, a co-op movie theater, walking biking trails, um, and of course the harbor. And the city has a delightful character which has been shaped by over a hundred years of extraordinary history. We're a part of the proud tradition of liberal arts colleges, but we have a twist. Um, we focus a lot on sustainability and social justice. And this building here is Wheeler Hall, which was the first to be built on campus. And today it houses our humanities courses and programs. Northland has over 40 different programs um, and ours span the arts and sciences with notable very Northland specific programs like natural resources, outdoor education, sustainable community development and more with some brand new minors <laughs> um, of sustainable agriculture and sports management. Speaking of sports, we're also NCAA Division III for athletics with 14 different varsity sports. <laughs> um, we have about roughly 38% of our student body participating in everything from golf to cross country to lacrosse um, and more. Northland's commitment to environmental education has been noticed around the US by some prestigious organizations. We were recognized as cool school by Sierra Magazine. We joined the Real Food Challenge. We're an Equal League member. Um, six other schools as well. Uh, we also divested from fossil fuels back in 2017 and we are Wisconsin's first B campus. 
Another defining characteristic of Northland is our strong sense of community with tons of different clubs, three different student publications, a gear rental outpost, and plenty of events throughout the year. It's a great place to make friends and get a fantastic education at the same time. It's a sort of place where while you're walking down these sidewalks, people will just say hi to you, even if you've never met them. Our location really underwrites everything that we do. Central to our sense of place is Lake Superior itself just 10 blocks from campus. Um, the lake is the largest freshwater lake in the world and at 350 miles long, it's roughly the size of North Carolina. Um, it's even so vast that it creates its own weather patterns. Over the course of almost 130 years now, Northland has developed a style of education that really thrives in this environment, most notably by providing experiential learning in abundance, whether that be out in the field, in the community, or in the lab. For example, our natural resource and biology majors spend countless hours in the field. And Professor Michelle Small said it best when she said, I love that Northland College is a school where you can know your students by their names, where you can do your job in depth, giving 100%, expecting the same return and reaping the rewards as you see real progress in the students' growth and development. She's been teaching at Northland for 47 years and still holds that same outlook. Let's talk applications. So it's free to apply at Northland. Um, letters of recommendation aren't required, nor are essays. Um, we're also ACT, SAT um, optional this year. Um, and our review takes about two weeks. We also take the comma app and of course parchment. Um, and let's talk scholarships and aid. The total cost of attendance to come to Northland next year is about $49,000 though. Nobody pays that much. Our academic scholarships start at $19,000 per year, and you get that at the same time as your letter of acceptance. There's also no extra fee for out-of-state students. Um, and there are also other merit-based scholarships available. And please do send us your FAFSA so we can get you qualified for work study and federal grants and loans and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, and finally, be sure to check out our social media, see what students are up to, and please feel free to reach out anytime with questions. Um, thanks for being here, and I will hand it back to our moderator. Thank you very much. As a final reminder to our participants, if you do have questions for any of the colleges during this session, there is a few minutes left to drop those into the Q&A and address those as they come in. Our final college for this session is Western Colorado University. Great. Thank you so much, Clarissa. And thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, what a great group of universities and colleges and panelists. I'm so honored to be um, just in the same space with them, and I hope that this session is really informative for all of you. Um, my name is Lindsay Leggett, and I am from Western Colorado University in Gunnison, Colorado. And um, here on your screen here, you kind of get a nice view of campus. It is not that green this time of year. It's got quite a bit of snow. Um, but it's absolutely beautiful year round. The building kind of in the back middle there is our brand new building for computer science and mechanical engineering um, that actually just opened up in January. So that's kind of a new and exciting program on Western's campus, but we'll kind of dive into everything else here. One of my favorite things about being a student at Western, I actually graduated back in 2016, is that our uh, backyard is nature's best classroom. So especially if you're interested in science related fields, we've got hundreds of acres of BLM land, national forest land, all of this public land that students have access to right in our backyard, all within 30 minutes of campus. And um, students use that both for studying, for recreation, but even if you're not necessarily interested in a science related field, there are tons of hands on learning opportunities. Just as an example from my time as a student at Western, I was in a public relations campaign writing course and I was able to actually sit down with two different companies in the Gunnison Valley and write public relations campaigns for them and help them implement them as well. So really get providing students with hands-on learning experiences and real world experiences in the classroom. Our average class size is 17 students, but the largest class that we have on campus will only hold about 50. So you will have a ton of accessibility to your professors, a ton of one-on-one um, -on -one interaction with your peers as well. And I think that's a really important part of choosing a smaller institution like Western is just getting that one-on-one -on -one individualized attention compared to potentially sitting in a 500 seat lecture hall 
where you might not get your questions answered if they do come up. Um, and that's certainly the opportunity that you have at Western to access your professors in and out of class. As far as affordability goes, um, Western is well below the national average for out-of-state tuition. Our out-of-state tuition is right around $18,600 per year, and the total cost of attendance is just over $32,000 per year. Um, but again, that's our sticker price. 80% of students at Western receive financial aid in the form of grants or scholarships. And the average financial aid award package per student, um, including in-state students, so that's um, kind of taking every student into account at Western. Um, our average financial aid award package is $6,000 per year. Out-of-state students typically get quite a bit more. Our merit-based scholarships are automatic. So if you have at least a 3.35 GPA from high school, you'll automatically get $8,000 per year to attend Western. And that can range all the way up to $10,000 per year, depending upon your GPA. We also have other scholarships, such as our common scholarship application, that's one scholarship application that applies you to over 40 scholarships on our website. And then every academic program also has program-based scholarships that you can apply for. But 100% of students that uh, apply and get accepted to Western are considered for those merit scholarships. As far as resources that we offer for students, we have a uh, academic resource center that is available for all students. And that houses our academic advising, disability services, career services. Um, so as soon as the first day of your freshman year, you can walk into these, office, these offices and um, utilize these resources at any point. Um, every single freshman that attends Western is automatically assigned an academic advisor to help kind of get you through class registration and make sure you're kind of set to go for your first semester of classes. Once you declare a major on campus, you will be able to choose a professor within your major to be your academic advisor moving forward. And you don't actually have to choose a major until the end of your sophomore year, so there's plenty of time to decide if you don't quite know already. We've also got a math tutoring center and a writing center where students in our math programs or English programs will help and sit down with you and work on your math homework or help you study for a math test. Um, and same thing with the writing center, you can go in and take a paper that you've already written and have students edit it for you. We've also got an epic mentorship program where students that are sophomores through seniors are paired with every single freshman that comes to Western. And they're just a really friendly face to help you kind of navigate through your transition onto campus and just to be there as a peer resource for you once you get to campus as well. If you're interested in visiting campus, we would love to have you. We are offering in-person campus visits. If you're not able to visit campus, we do have a virtual tour option and some other ways to explore Western remotely. And you can go to western.edu forward slash visit for either of those options. We've also got some other recruitment events coming up this semester. Um, like if you're interested in a specific academic program or a specific club, we've got some deep dive events for those specific programs coming up and you can check those out at western.edu forward slash recruitment events. And then if you're interested in applying to Western, we do operate off of rolling admissions. You can use the Western application or the Common App, whichever is easiest for you. We are test optional this year. So the only um, material that we'll need from your application other than your application itself is your transcript. If you'd like to submit an essay or letters of recommendation or anything like that as well, we would love to read it, um, but it's up to you. And we do have a $30 application fee, but you can use the code GOWESTERN2021 to waive that. And this is my direct contact information, and I would love to hear from you. And I am your admissions counselor, so feel free to reach out with questions. And I will turn it back over to Clarissa. All right, thank you so much, everyone, for presenting today and giving us more information about your respective institutions. I'd like to bring back all of our panelists just for a last quick Q&A, just to give you guys a little bit more insight to their favorite things on their campus. So the question we're going to be answering is, what is your favorite event or tradition on your campus? And we'll start with Hawaii specific. All right, yes, actually, it is this week. We have our Fin Week, so kind of like Shark Week. Uh, we have competitions with our students. There's a scavenger hunt. We have our Shark Wars team competition. Uh, take the lead leadership seminar this week. We celebrate our seniors, celebrate our student athletes. We have a game night. 
And then we're going to cap it off normally with the in-person concert, but this year it's going to be a virtual concert. So we're super excited about Fin Week this year. Pacific University, Oregon. Sure. So one really fun thing with Pacific is about 15% of our kids actually come from the islands of Hawaii out to Oregon. And what that means is we have an amazing Hawaii club that any student can join to learn about their culture, what they're bringing to campus. And it means we actually put on the largest student run luau anywhere on the mainland US. So Hawaii still has this beat, but other than that, it's the biggest one on the mainland. And since it's all student run, you could actually dance on stage and learn a hula dance in front of 4,000 people. It's actually our biggest event on campus. Everyone gets super involved and it's really, really fun to learn about that culture, but also be able to be part of it because it's your friends, your classmates, or even the president of the university dancing on stage in front of everyone. Willamette. Um, one of my favorite events on campus is our midnight breakfast that occurs every Monday night of finals week. I think this is probably a tradition that a lot of schools have, but we um, make a really big deal out of it. Our president comes and many faculty and staff will come to serve our students. It's a free breakfast that's from nine to midnight every Monday night of finals week. It's a great um, kind of community builder. Um, didn't happen this past year again because of COVID. So we did some virtual programming as well, but we are looking forward to that returning hopefully soon. Webster. Yeah, so once a semester at Webster, there's um, there's a big game of humans versus zombies, which is a really big deal on campus. It's sort of like one giant game of tag. Um, I don't really get it, and I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to get it, and that's fine. But yes, there's students running around campus with Nerf guns and balled up socks and shooting one another, and the students are like really into it. So that happens once a semester, and you can always tell when it's going on. So. Northland College. Yeah, my favorite event is the everybody party at the beginning of each year. Um, we host a huge get together for all of the new first year students. Everybody welcomes them up onto campus. They do live music, local food, um, all the clubs and orgs set up tables and the sailing club brings their sailboat onto the mall. It's wild. Um, so that's mine. In Western Colorado. Yeah, my favorite tradition on campus is every year for homecoming. Our, um, we actually have like the largest collegiate emblem on the side of a mountain in the United States, which is interesting. Um, but every year our collegiate certified mountain rescue team goes up and lights that W on fire. So that's a fun tradition for homecoming and um, everyone gathers around town to, to see it. Awesome, well, thank you everyone for joining us this evening. When you close this window, there will be a link to a very quick four question survey and we appreciate any feedback you can provide to us. And in about a week, you'll be able to find this session's recordings as well as everything else from these sessions on the same site where you registered. Thank you again and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your evening.